So it's probably not shocking for anyone to hear that Spider-Man deals with more pain than almost any other hero out there. Whether it's his friends and family being violently murdered, having the responsibility of the entire world on his shoulders, getting buried alive, or even just getting tired but never being able to take a break, Spider-Man is pretty much tortured all the time. But surprisingly, Peter is usually able to keep a giant smile on his face. However, even Spider-Man does have moments where he feels like the walls are just closing in on him and he doesn't know if he'll be able to pull himself out. And one of the things that most people love about Spider-Man is the fact that he always finds a way to pull himself back out. Regardless of whatever it takes, or even if there's an impossible decision to make, he somehow finds a way to make the right one. I think that that really shows in the Superior Spider-Man story. Everyone knows that Peter Parker gets his body back from Dr. Otto Octavius. Otto didn't want to give his body up though, he did it because it was the right thing to do. The city was in terror, and he knew that he wasn't going to be able to make the impossible decisions that Spider-Man has to. That train of thought is what leads him to give Peter his body back, finally recognizing that Peter was the Superior Spider-Man. Spider-Man. But for Peter, being the superior Spider-Man is pretty much a terrible thing. It's super easy for him to forget about all the people he saved because he can only think about the people that he loses. People like Uncle Ben, Gwen Stacy, and Harry Osborn. So when Aunt May gets shot and is dying in a hospital bed, Peter doesn't know what to do. Let me give a little more context about what I just said. During Civil War, Spider-Man revealed his identity. This was a bad idea because the stereotypical all of his villains are going to come after his family thing actually happened. Basically, Kingpin hears the news that Spider-Man is Peter Parker and puts a hit on his head. So as soon as he gets home after revealing his identity, the crosshairs are on him. But fortunately or unfortunately for Peter, his spider sense comes on at the last second. He grabs Mary Jane and gets them both to safety, but what he sees when he looks up nearly breaks him. Aunt May has been shot and is probably going to die. What makes all of this so much worse is that the bullet that hit Aunt May was the same bullet that was meant to hit him. Remember what I said earlier about impossible decisions? This was definitely one of them. All he had to go off was instinct and he wasn't even able to possibly think of the the fact that a bullet could have hit May. Since Peter bears the responsibility for everything that happens in his life, he feels responsible for Aunt May getting shot. And this is just another one of the many moments where he wonders to himself, God, why me? But what if, when he said that, someone was actually listening? This story picks up with Aunt May in the hospital from her injuries, and she is going to die. While MJ is at the hospital with May, Peter is busy trying to handle and deal with these emotions. So he's in a random alleyway of New York just beating the hell out of a couple of dumpsters. But out of nowhere, someone comes up behind Peter and touches his back. This is weird because his spider sense didn't go off. He turns around to see a strange man that he's literally never met in his entire life. Peter pulls a bully Maguire and tells the man that it'd be a good idea to back off because he's not in the mood right now. But the strange man just tells Peter that he has a great idea, why don't they go out and get a couple of burgers together? Peter's not really used to people being super nice to him, so he automatically assumes this is a scam. But the man says, no scam, I just think you could use a meal. He never responds, but then the old man says his name. Peter assumes that since his identity was just revealed, the dude wants to get to know him because he's a fan, but this is no mere fan. Peter's hand are pretty messed up from punching the garbage cans around so much and the man just says you're welcome Peter. He's confused at first but then he looks down and his hands are completely healed. It took a little while but he realizes that earlier his spider sense didn't go off when he came up on him. And that's when he asks what we're all thinking, who is this guy? To which all he can say back is, come on Peter, you know who I am, revealing himself to be the one above all, god of the Marvel Universe. This makes Peter realize that it's kinda time to go get burgers with this guy. But when he does, he doesn't really know what to say, he kinda just apologizes for wasting his time, thinking that he must be very busy. But then out of nowhere, he musters up some courage. Pete asks the one above all, the literal god of his universe, why he's making his life so terrible. May's death is affecting Peter so negatively that he's actually asking god if it's all part of his cosmic design, or if it's just just part of a plan to make his life worse. God responds by saying, if that were my plan, what would you do about it, Peter? For a second, he's just dumbfounded by God saying that to him, but then he says, I'd beg you to save her. The one above all replies to Peter's question with another question. What if it meant you couldn't be Spider-Man anymore? Pete says that he would give up being Spider-Man in a heartbeat to save Aunt May. But then out of the blue, the one above all teleports them somewhere else. But Peter knows this place. It's Robert Moses Beach at Coney Island. He used to go there with Uncle Ben while he was still alive. The two of them take a trip down the boardwalk, and Peter starts berating him with more and more and more questions. He asks if he did something bad to deserve this. The one above all says no. He asks if this is all just some big test, and he says no, it's not a test, but it is. He even asks the one above all why humans have to suffer, and the one above all gives him just another wish wishy-washy response, saying that it's just one of those mysteries. But he says that it's something that's not just happening to Peter, it's happening to everyone and every single person is dealing with their own struggles. But all of a sudden, Peter looks out at the beach and it's full of tens of thousands of people. Peter wonders who these people are, asking who 
who are they? He finds out that those are just some of the people that he saved from his life of being Spider-Man. But for just one second, something besides Aunt May's death is on his mind. It's weird for Peter to see all the people that he saved. Most of the time they're in his life for one second, he gets them back to safety and then they're gone. But in the crazy situations that Spider-Man's put into, he doesn't really stop to think that he just actually saved someone's life. Spider-Man gives each and every one of those people filling up the beach a second chance. A chance to live the rest of their lives, to see their loved ones again, to go on to do great things, or to become a mother, father, grandfather, grandmother. And each and every one of the people on that beach only have the blessing of life because Peter Parker is Spider-Man. This opens up Peter's eyes and he says thank you for that, but it didn't really answer any of his questions. The one above all knows that this helped Peter's mind a little bit, but he also knows that it didn't make the pain he's experiencing any less unbearable. So he tells Peter that fortunately or unfortunately, everyone has a role to play, and that whether he likes it or not, this is his role. But he also gets a little stern with Peter here, telling Peter that he's asked much more from people a lot closer to him, basically inferring that Peter's hardship is bad, but it's definitely not as bad as it could be. And as they stare out at that beach together, Peter reveals that he doesn't want his aunt to die, he's afraid. He says, please don't let her die. But the only reply he gets is, have faith, Peter. And all of a sudden, like nothing even happened, he's teleported to that alleyway again. This experience does stick with him though, and it gives him some hope. A hope that his role in the grand scheme of things allows him to continue living a life with Mary Jane. It's also another one of those moments that just reassures him that he needs to continue being Spider-Man. I've said it before, and I'll probably say it again in these videos, but he thinks about giving up all the time. And while it didn't make him feel any better about Aunt May or anyone else around him that's died, it definitely reinforces the thought that he needs to continue continue being Spider-Man as long as he possibly can. Especially considering that his rock bottom is a big enough deal for the one above all to make an appearance. And to talk a bit about the one above all, his appearance here isn't really to make Peter feel any better. He usually doesn't talk to cosmic entities or gods, let alone humans. So why did he talk to Peter Parker? I hate to be cheesy, but the reason he talked to him is to show Peter his responsibility. To give him that accurate representation of the amount of life that he has saved. Not to stroke his ego, but to prove the point that he needs to keep doing what he's doing. He's not there for Peter Parker or Spider-Man. He's there for the people that Spider-Man has saved. And to ensure that no matter how terrible the role is that Peter plays, he continues playing it. Personally, it is one of my favorite Spider-Man comics just because it gives so much emphasis on how important he is as a character to the Marvel Universe. Also, I just think the art's really cool. But that is mostly my opinion. And you guys should let me know your opinion down in the comment section below. And if there are any topics that you guys want to hear me talk about in the future, please let me know. I'm definitely not the type of creator that likes to ignore comments. I do see most of them. And even if I don't reply, I really enjoy seeing what you guys have to say. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying the content, please make sure to like and subscribe as it does help me a lot. As always, I'll talk to you guys later.